once again, starting live. It's still a couple minutes early for class. <clears throat> so I'm not going to actually start the class yet, but this is different than the testing I just did. So just to be sure everything looks okay, let me make sure I did the lighting right and got everything in the right place here. I'm hoping still visually and uh, the audio is still fine on this. If, boy, I see a lot of people commenting. Boy, this is new to me, so you, you all hang in. Hi, people who are saying hi. If there's a problem, uh, shoot me a comment here. Tell me if uh, things look a little bit not so good, lighting-wise or even um, with the sound. And I'm going to start in a couple of minutes. Well, there's a few of you out there. Boy, I wish you were here with me. It's kind of lonely being here by myself and very different, but you know what? Hopefully someday things will get more normal and we will all be able to practice yoga in the same room. Um, there are lots of things that I am thinking of doing if that doesn't happen too soon as the weather gets cooler. Uh, finding a spot for an outdoor class so that we can all be without masks and uh, practicing at safe distances apart. So I'm up for anybody's ideas. Anyone who has any ideas at all, please, please let me know. Um, I'm open to anything. As you know, I am having online classes this week and then next week I will open up the studio to only seven students at a time. I've already spaced mats out. I know that we can get safely social distance uh, with seven people plus me in the room wearing masks. Um, and I don't really know how many of you, now that things, numbers get higher and higher, are interested in doing that. So over this next week, if you do want to reserve a spot in a class in person, uh, text me, uh, message me, call me, email, do whatever you can to let me know so I can give you a spot. I'll cut it off at that seven number and then hopefully if people do want to come to class, you'll have a chance. Just be aware, we will all be wearing masks and I will be teaching these same times recording, but people will be in the room. Now the people who come to class will not be on the video, so don't be concerned. Nobody's going to see your face or anything on the video. But, so that's what my plans are for coming up. Depending, let's see how this week goes. As we've been doing for four months, let's kind of go day to day and see what happens. So let's start to sit comfortably. I'm in a chair. This is going to be the gentle class. That does not mean you need to sit in a chair, and all of you who have taken my classes know that. You're welcome to sit on the floor however is comfortable for you. You're welcome to sit in a chair. If you have a chair at home that's similar to this, it's firm, and without the arms, it would be preferable. But you know what? I used everything in my house the last month as I started feeling better and able to practice yoga. I used coffee table, I used chairs, I used my kitchen counter, I used anything, the back of my sofa. So, you know, just need to adapt, don't we, and do what we can to help ourselves. And moving in yoga is very helpful. Um, as sick as I was, it took me a while to even be back to, to doing my yoga. But now, first thing in the morning when I get up, I I go to my mat and, and do my practice, and it has really helped me, I believe, to recover. So let's start, first just start out by being with our breath. Close your eyes and let yourself just get comfortable the way you're seated. If 
If you need a blanket underneath you, get one. Let yourself release your hands to wherever feels comfortable to, for you, whether it's in your lap, or beside you, whatever feels really good up into your shoulders. Let your shoulders just soften down away from your ears. And then just be with your breath. Really watching your breaths now, coming in and going out. See if you can feel the breath coming into the belly, into your ribs, all the way up into your chest so that you come into those deeper, fuller breaths. Breathing in and out through your nose. Your face be soft. Really start to feel soft all around your eyes, across your forehead, releasing through your jaw. And then we'll let our arms come on down beside us. So if you're on the floor, fingertips can lightly touch the ground here now. Lengthen up through the top of your head. Feel that sense of space in your spine. And let your next inhale rise your arms all the way out and up overhead. And on your exhale, bring your hands right down through the midline to rest in front of your chest. And then we'll reverse and inhale the hands right up through the midline. And on the exhale, open the arms, arm back out and down. Once again, inhale the hands all the way out and up overhead. Come into a wide V. Turn your palms towards each other. Let the pinkies turn a little towards each other. Feel your feet in the floor, whether it's just pressing down into the bottoms of your feet or pressing into the outside edges of your feet or your heels. And then release and let your arms come on down. And let's bring our hands behind us. Interlace your fingers. Now, you can if you choose. Rest your arms on the back of your chair. You can come forward if you'd like in your chair and let your hands rest there on your back, whichever feels good. And then as you exhale, just come a little bit forward. Keep your back nice and long. And as you inhale, rise gently back up. Now this doesn't mean you need to move far. Just start to enjoy feeling your breath move your body. Exhalation, bring you forward. Inhalation, bringing you back up. Just following your own breath. And then the next time you come up, let yourself release your hands again beside you, out beside you, and we'll inhale the arms all the way out and up overhead. And on the exhale, bring our hands down together in front of our hearts. And then unfold your arms again beside you and let your wrists circle so your hands circle a little bit. Open your hands and circle at first, one direction, and then just reverse and go the other direction. And then make loose fists with your hands and circle your hands in one direction. And then we'll reverse and go the other. And then let your hands come on down. Shake them out just a little bit. If you're cross-legged on the floor, switch the cross to your legs. Bring your other leg in front so you even out just a little bit. And now we'll again start to move forward and back. So as you exhale, bring yourself forward just a little bit or a lot, depending on you. And on your inhale, you come on back up. So take your time. It might be an inch that you move. If you're keeping your back long. Maybe further for you, depending on you, how it feels in your hips and your back. And remember, if you have not been doing yoga at all for quite a long time, be really easy. Anything that hurts, don't do it. Let yourself stop. If you feel glitches that don't feel so good, stop and kind of reassess before you keep on. And just really don't push through. It's been a really stressful few months for all of us so just listen to your body and start to just enjoy being with your physical movement and your breath and we're going to finish back up at the top 
Okay, from here, we're gonna stretch our right leg long. If you're in the chair like I am, kind of scoot to the edge of your chair, keep your, your left foot on the floor. Now, if you're on the floor, you can stretch your right leg long and then bring your left foot in to maybe to the inside of your right leg somewhere, below or above, that's up to you. And then we're gonna come forward from here just a little bit, a little bit of a seated forward bend. It's up to you, some of you I know, on the floor will want to reach all the way down to your foot because it feels good in your chair if you want to put your forearm there above your knee and let yourself come forward just that far and feel the back of the leg heels on the ground drawing back towards you a little bit and let yourself just enjoy coming into this bit of a forward bend And then we'll come on back up and bring, if you're in your chair, that right foot back to the floor. And you're in, on the floor, keep the leg long because now we are going to cross our left ankle above or below our right knee into that figure four. Right? So sitting up tall, flex through that foot, that left foot. And then again, from here, start to ease your way forward. You can put your right hand on your foot if you want. You can press the ball of that left foot into your hand or interlace your fingers through your toes, those of you who really like to start to feel that finding the space between the toes, really good thing to do. So just be mindful, take your time. Don't go any further than feels okay for your own back and your hip. And breathe. And we're gonna come on back up to the top. Once you're here, take a nice inhale. And on the exhale, we'll twist to our left. So your right hand can come to your shin. It can come all the way across onto your knee. Let yourself go as much around as feels good for you in the twist. In other words, you may want to look at the wall there to your left, or you may want to turn to look behind you. One more inhale. And as you exhale, use your belly to come on back around into center. And then again, just come forward just a little bit. Take your time. And then we'll come on back up. We're going to uncross. And we're going to stretch the left leg out long on the floor now. So again, if you're on the floor, you can draw your right foot into the inside of your leg somewhere. If you're on your chair, you can keep the foot flat on the floor. And as you ease your way forward, whether it's an inch or two or three or four, Feel the heel drawing back towards you. Let yourself come in. If you want to reach your toes, if you're down there on the floor and that feels good, do. Just enjoy coming forward with that long back. And of course, if, if folding over at the end there on the floor or even in your chair, if it feels good to fold a little bit and reach towards your toe, just be mindful. One more breath here. And then we'll come on back up and we're going to cross that right ankle above the left knee or below if you're on the floor, right? If you're in your chair and the crossing is too much, try your thigh over your thigh. That can work too. Or ankle in front of ankle, right? Right ankle in front of left ankle. And then again, see about coming forward just a little bit, flexing the foot. You can put your left hand on that right foot, press your foot into your hand a little bit or interlace your fingers if you'd like between your toes. You might even feel like giving your foot a little bit of a massage there. So if that feels good, you can just easily move a little bit there and let yourself wake your foot up a little bit through a bit of massage. One more breath. back up, take a nice inhale here, and on the exhale we're going to twist to our left, so that left hand, can, I mean to our right, that left hand can come to your right knee there, or to the shin, let yourself lengthen up through the top of your head, and enjoy shoulders releasing down, and remember, how far you look, either to the side, behind yourself, that's all up to you, how your neck feels, mindful. One more breath. And then use your belly a little bit. Bring yourself back around and 
let's uncross our legs and stretch your legs out in front of you here now. So if you're in your chair and you want to scoot back, do move through your feet and your ankles a little bit. Shake it out. Good. And we're going to come around towards our hands and knees, or if you know you don't want to be on your knees, take your chair, turn it around to face you so that you have the seat of the chair facing you. I'm just going to come up and make sure there's no issues here. I think we're okay. All right. So coming on to hands and knees, if you're on the floor, if you need a blanket and you need a blanket to come underneath your knees, by all means, put a blanket underneath your knees and give yourself a little support there. Or your hands, if your wrists are iffy, come to fists, if that feels even better, so that you are not feeling discomfort in your knees or your wrists. Look down between your hands, spread your fingers nice and wide, reach back through your tailbone, take a nice inhale, and on the exhale, we're going to draw the tailbone up under us and round up into our cat pose. And on the inhale, sending your tailbone back and up and just rolling back through the spine, letting your head be the last thing to either come a little bit forward with your gaze or all the way forward. So on the exhale, Round up into your cat pose. And on the inhale, move back through to your cow. Now, you don't have to go with my breath. Go with your own. So let the tempo of your own breath just allow you to move through your cat cows. And just enjoy that suppleness of your spine. feeling the breath just moving the body here. And then finish off the one we're on here. We're going to come back to a more neutral spine. All right? So if you're in your chair, we'll step our left foot forward and our right foot back just a little bit and keep your heel, right heel on the floor if you're in your chair. Bend your left knee a little bit. Now if you're on the floor, you want to send your, your, down on your hands and knees, send your right foot back all the way to the floor, curl the toes under, and get your calf stretched that way, all right? So just release here wherever you are. Let yourself open up through the back of the leg. And then we're going to switch. So coming on forward with the knee or the foot, stepping the left foot back. If you're in the chair, keep the heel on the floor directly behind the foot. Bend the right knee a little bit, and there you are in your calf. If you're on the floor, the toes are curled under, or the leg is long. Good. And then we're going to come on forward again with the right foot and go into a little bit longer lunge. So take your time. You know your hands can be up on the seat of the chair. You can go a little bit longer or a lot longer, or you may grab your blocks if you choose have blocks there with you and have your hands on the blocks. A coffee table is a great height for a lunge too, by the way. And we're going to switch legs. So bringing that left foot back. Draw your shoulders down now. Let yourself enjoy. Feel your whole body here in your lunge. Feel that length of the back body. Engage your belly. And from here, we'll step forward and come into our standing forward bend. So feet are hips distance apart and parallel. You know your back. The only, the only person that knows whether you need to stay up higher or go further into your forward bend is you. So you support, stack blocks if you want, up into the seat of the chair to be even higher. Go down if you want, onto forearms, onto your chair, hands onto the blocks. Some of you I know like to release all the way hands down either towards the floor or to hold your elbows. So by all means, stay here. Let your, uh, your eyes close. Really let your awareness go to your breath. Close your eyes. And breathe. Really enjoy feeling the breath coming into the ribs. Expansion of the ribs as you inhale. Think about the crown of the head just getting closer towards the floor or the chair or whatever you have in front of you when you exhale. Following your breaths all the way through to the end of your inhales and all the way through to the 
the end of your exhale. And we'll bring our hands to our hips from here. We're going to bend our knees, press into our feet, and rise on up to standing. And we'll inhale the arms all the way out and up overhead. And on our exhale, let our hands come down together in front of our hearts. So coming into mountain pose here now, take your time. You can look at your feet. You can walk in place a little bit if that helps you really get your feet right underneath you. How far apart, you know, some of us a fist, some a fist and a half, just where you feel very solidly based equally between your feet. And then let your hands come gently together in front of your chest, in front of your heart. If you like to close your eyes, which most of you know that I love closing my eyes in mountain pose a lot of the time. But otherwise, if you're dizzy at all, keep your eyes open. Bring your gaze to look out like you're looking right out to the horizon if you're standing outside. And then just be. Let yourself feel that sense of being very equally grounded through your feet. Couple this is a line so that you're not tucking your tailbone forward. You feel your tailbone just dropping down towards between your heels, hips over your ankles, shoulders over your hips. Enjoy the quiet and imagine for a second that you're breathing in and out through every pore of your skin. Almost like you've become a part of the space around you. Unfold our arms. Right one down beside us. Float your hands just a little arms a little away from you. Turn your palms forward. Spread your fingers a little bit. Reach down through your fingertips and feel as open as you can across your chest. Feel that sense of the release of the shoulders down. And let's inhale the arms up into a wide V. So arms are a wide V. Turn the pinkies towards each other. If it feels good to you to look up, do. But as you do, reach your tailbone down, like between your heels, so you're not tucking your tailbone forward. One more inhale. And on the exhale, bend your knees and come on forward into that standing forward bend. And on your next inhale, find a nice flat back. So let your hands come either to the chair seat or to your shins or your blocks. Find that length of the spine. And we're going to step our right foot back and come into lunge. Coming into a sun salutation here now. Draw the shoulders away from the ears. Press the feet gently away from each other. And we'll come on into downward facing dog pose from here. Now, everybody's down dog is different. Hands on the chair or the table in front of you or whatever you have in front of you. Letting yourself come into kind of closer to a capital letter L shape, really. Finding that length. Your hands may be lower down to blocks any height. Still, maybe your heels will be on the floor, and that's fine. You're thinking of lengthening your spine. If your hands are on the floor, you can go as much as into an upside-down V so that you let yourself reach back, lift your tailbone, your sits bones, bend the knees if you want. Everybody's shoulders are different, so everybody's down dog. You've got to find what works for you. Take your time. <clears throat> bend your knees a little bit. Even walk, bending one knee at a time if you can. And on the next inhale, we're going to come on out towards a plank. Now, as you come into a plank, you know, adjust accordingly, right? If you're feeling like it's really too much to do a full plank, don't do it. Allow your knees to come down. Stay in your dog if you'd rather. Put your knees down and rest if you'd rather. And then we'll come on back into down dog, reaching back through the sit bones, through the tailbone there. Feel your elbows softly hugging inward. And from here, we'll bring our right foot forward to find a lunge. So coming back into that lunge, and after you're on the floor, you need to put your left knee down to bring that right foot forward, do. And then we'll come on back into standing forward, bend feet, hips distance apart and parallel. And again, you find what works for you. Go to where you're able to be in your forward bend without discomfort in your back. You might feel it in the backs of the legs. If you need to bend your knees, do. Think about having your sitting bones right over your heels. 
and then pull deep breath. See if you can count to four or five or six. And when you inhale, and try to reach that same count when you exhale. and bend our knees and rise on up. We're going to inhale our arms all the way out and up overhead. And on our exhale, bring our hands down together in front of our hearts. Let's reverse to inhale the hands right up through the midline. On the exhale, open the arms like wings and come on forward to standing forward bend. Let your next inhale help you find a nice flat back. And this time, left foot comes back to come into lunge. So draw your shoulders down, press your feet away from each other now, and engage your low belly a little bit. Zip up that low belly, inhale, exhale into your downward facing dog pose again. So again, your choice, hands are about shoulder distance apart, let your elbows hug inward, feel that hollowing sensation now in your armpits, and let yourself find that length of your own spine. And on the next inhale, we'll come on out again towards that plank or half plank. If you need to go to your forearms, if you're on the floor, do. And if you like to do a little push-up, you know, you can bend your elbows. Whenever you're thinking about your elbows coming in towards your ribs when you bend them. So that instead of outward, like a traditional push-up, you can just let yourself do a little bit of yoga style push-ups there. And then we'll come on back into our downward facing dog pose. Think about, if possible, the ears kind of being between your upper arms. I know that doesn't always work, but do where you can. We're going to step the left foot forward, come into lunge. Does not matter what you need to do to get into that lunge. And then we'll come all the way back into standing forward bend. So for a second, just be aware of your feet. Lift your toes up a little bit. Let yourself feel that sense of the four corners of your feet into the floor. So you're not rolling to the outside, to the insides of your feet. Release your toes back down and then just be here with your breath. Let your arms go wherever you choose. You may want to wrap around your legs. You may want to put your hands up on your low back and clasp them there. Or sometimes clasping your hands at the back of your head feels really good. Be with how you're feeling right now in the moment here. And then we'll release our hands back to our hips, bend our knees and rise on up. We'll inhale the arms up overhead. Now on the exhale, we're going to come into a little chair pose. So it can be a high chair. You can sit back just a little bit. Or you may decide you want to bend your knees deeper, shift your weight to your heels a little more, and come a little lower. So that's up to you. Let yourself just feel very equal through your feet. Feel your quads engaging. Working all the muscles around your knees here. Hands just right at the heart, letting your thumbs come in towards your breastbone. One more inhale. And then as you exhale, come on forward into that standing forward bend. You support that you need. And on your next inhale, find that long back. And we're going to walk into a down dog from here. So make your way into your downward facing dog pose. Spread your fingers, walk a little bit if you need. And on the next inhale, we'll come on out to plank. Now, those of you who've been in class with me know you are welcome to do a back bend or not. So you can come all the way to the floor and do a sphinx, a cobra. You may decide to come through for an up dog, totally optional. And then make your way on back into your downward facing dog pose. Take your time. We're going to do that same thing again. We're going to inhale our way on out to plank. And again, totally optional, back bend or not, and what kind. You can come to sphinx on your forearms. You can come down to the floor and go to a little cobra or into an up dog or a full cobra. And then we'll come on back again into downward facing dog pose. And from here, let's bring our right foot forward and come into lunge. And then we'll come all the way back into standing forward bend, letting ourselves release here and breathe. Take your time. 
You want to hold your elbows and that feels good too. And feel the weight of your head. Let yourself really feel that sense of release in the neck from allowing your head kind of to traction your spine a little bit. You know if that bothers your back, don't do it. Putting support under your hands or your forearms. Remember you can always rest with your arms, elbows and other knees if it's better. And then we're going to bring our hands on up to our hips and bend our knees and rise up to standing. We'll inhale the arms all the way out and up overhead. And on our exhale, bring our hands down together in front of our hearts. So bringing your chin down towards your chest, just let your head come forward. Let your neck release there. And then rise your head on back up. Let's unfold our arms. And let's inhale our right arm all the way out and up overhead. And bend your elbow. Let, let yourself adjust however you need by coming here. Right, your elbow may need to come out or forward. And if you can take your left hand behind you and let it face palm out on your low back, just to find a little more in that shoulder view. I know some of you like to bring your hands closer towards each other. So if you like, you know, you can reach your hands towards each other there on your back. Pay attention to your shoulders. Now feel your tailbone dropping down. Try not to curl your tailbone forward there. It doesn't matter how far you get with it. Just let your shoulders feel a little more open. And then we're going to unfold the arms. And we're going to rise up with the left arm and bend the elbow. You know, if it helps, you can kind of give a little help with your right hand there in front. Or over the top, too, if that helps to open up a little more in your tricep there. And then your right hand comes behind you and you can keep it low with the palm turned out. If that hurts your shoulder, don't even do that. If you can do a little bit more, bring the hands closer together, do. Let yourself just enjoy opening up through the shoulders here. And then we'll unfold our arms on down beside us. Inhale the arms straight out from your shoulders. Turn your palms up for a second. And then just bend your elbows and let your fingertips rest on the tops of your shoulders. And then just make little circles. Doesn't matter which direction, we'll go both. They can get bigger if you want, but just feel the shoulders releasing a little bit more. And then just reverse and go the other way. And then we'll release and come on back down. Shake out just a little bit. I'm gonna turn my chair the other way. So if you are using your chair, you might wanna turn the back of it if you have one that you can do that to. Hold on. Seeing if there's any kind of issues. Seeing if I can get, um, I don't mean to be waving to you people. I'm seeing if I can get these uh, things off my screen. So, sorry this is all new to me, bear with me. We're gonna come into stepping the right foot back into warrior two. So, as you step your right foot back and get your foot about parallel to the back edge of your mat, or you can always send your heel back further. Remember, the length of your stance does not matter, two feet, three feet, four feet. Let's bend into that left knee, take a look at your knee, line yourself up. If it's been a while since you've done yoga, always good just to feel really well aligned in your poses. Starting from there, we'll rise our arms on up and out. Bring your gaze out over the top of your left hand there, maybe even right out over the top of your middle finger. And feel the fingertips reaching as equally away from the midline as you can here now. Feeling open through the chest, through the upper back. Also feeling nice and strong. You know, really allowing yourself to get into your whole body in the pose, feet gently pressing away from each other. We'll turn the left palm up to reverse the warrior. We'll inhale the left hand up, reaching into that left side of the body, really stretching up towards the ceiling. Find as much space as you can in your left ribs. And on your next exhale, come into your side angle. So you can use your chair, you can use your hand on your thigh, you can use your hand on your chair. You can go lower to forearm on your thigh or hand down to the seat of your chair. At first, let your right hand stay on your hip. Just let, let it stay there. Let yourself find your legs, find your hips as you feel that great sense of openness here in the hips. And then swing that right arm on in front of your chest. You can look down a second, and then when you open up to the side, 
let yourself enjoy here. Now, if your shoulder bothers you, don't do this part. Keep your right hand down on your hip. You can always keep the right arm up, too, if that's better for your shoulder. Or you can keep that hand in line with the right side of the body and the right leg there. Coming into your side angle, really enjoy. Reach that right sitting bone towards your right heel. We're going to come on back to warrior two from here, pressing the feet away from each other. Let's bring our hands on down. We're going to turn our feet more parallel here. And we're going to come on into a wide-legged forward bend. So, you know, if you need support, get whatever you have, right? Whatever you need. If you need your blocks on around in front of you, get them. Take your time. Start to get your feet the distance apart that feels good. And bend a knee at a time. And really just be mindful as you come from one side to the other. And open up those inner thighs there. And then come on back into center. And take your time here. You know you can stay up. You can stack blocks up and be up out of your hands. So if it feels better to be on forearms, up on blocks, you can do that. You can bring your hands more down towards between your feet. You can hold your ankles if that feels good. You can walk your hands way back behind you too if that feels good. You can get hands to just walk all the way back behind you. But get to where you don't have to really be focused at all physically. You can focus totally on your breath without any discomfort in your body. So find where you can be, where you can. Start to even your breaths out again, letting your inhales and your exhales come close to the same length. Maybe even extend your exhales out two or three counts longer than your inhales. One more breath. And we'll slowly walk our hands back out. Now to come up, it is up to you. Let you bring your feet closer together. Bend your knees. Let your hands help you on back up. If you're dizzy at all, take your time. We'll bring our feet on together. Shake it out a little bit. Move around. If you need to, walk around your mat. And I like to turn to the tops of my toes and stretch my feet out after warrior series and we are going to go the other side so we'll be stepping the right foot back sorry right foot forward left foot back lining up your heels here now and now you'll get the view of a, the back of a warrior two so take your time if you want to look you can look but just be mindful let yourself start to feel the feet in the floor get that alignment of your front knee and then rise your arms on up and out, reaching out through the fingertips and softening the shoulders down away from the ears. Take the time to feel, again, the whole body in the pose. Chin about parallel to the floor, just so it feels really easy. You have length in your throat, in the back of your neck. And then we'll lower that left arm down, turn the right palm up, inhale, coming into breathing into the right ribs. So expand the ribs on those inhales on that right side. And on the exhale, we'll come into that side angle. So again, hand can be wherever you like, on your leg, chair, you know, you can put that forearm down lower onto your leg if you want. Take your time. Let your left hand rest for a second on your hip. And then when you're ready, swing that left arm. You kind of look down a second. And then when you open fully into that side body, adjust your arm where it needs to go. If you need the arm to come straight up, do it. If you want to put your hand down on your hip, or you can keep your hand, obviously, arm in line. Remember, how long your stance is doesn't matter. 
your warrior two can be shorter, you can be up higher in this side angle. It's not about how far. And then we're going to come on back into warrior two. Take your time, press your feet away from each other. Always using, if your chair's right there, using it for balance if you need. And we're going to straighten that front knee out, turn our feet more parallel. And we're going to come on forward into a wide-legged forward bend. So be mindful again, take your time. And this time, once you get into your forward bend, see if you can, just walk your hands over towards your right. So you just easily move over towards your right foot, doesn't matter how far you go, and then just stay there for a couple breaths. Feel the left foot pressing gently away from the midline. And then come on back through center and we'll go the other side. So just gently pressing that right foot away from the midline a little bit there. And then we'll come on back into center. And again, just come to where you can be comfortably with your breath. Watching the breaths in and out. If it helps you, you can Use the mantra, so hum. You can think the word so when you inhale. And hum when you exhale. Feeling that resonance. Inhaling so. Exhaling hum. into standing. So how you get there, very much up to you. You were upside down a while, so if you're di di dizzy, take care. Be mindful. Move around a little bit again through your feet and your ankles. And let's come into a little tree. Now what you use for support for tree, I've got a pole, I've got a wall, I've got my chair, what you find at home, kitchen, cabinet, whatever works. Let's all just turn and put our left hand on towards something if we need it for support. And then we're going to stand on our left foot and bring our right foot in for our, a tr little tree pose. Now it can be letting your right heel come to your inner ankle with your toes on the ground. That's a good tree pose, a little bit more support there so that you, you, your balance might be a little bit easier, especially if you haven't been doing much yoga work or even much work with balance, right? You can also put your foot on your inner calf. And same thing there, let your foot come into your inner calf, your inner calf comes back into your foot. Or you can bring your foot up all the way up into your inner thigh, getting that heel up as high as you can, and allowing yourself to feel the foot gently coming into your inner thigh, inner thigh coming back into your foot. So you choose what, what, what works for you. And if you need to come out of one and go to the other, the different level with the foot, do it. And take your time. See if you can let your right arm rise up. And then maybe even release your right hand from the wall or, the, or whatever you're touching there, or even the chair. And let yourself balance for a breath or two. And then we'll release and come on down and we're going to switch and go to the other side. So right hand is your support hand if you need it. You're going to stand on your right supporting foot there. Bring the foot in either heel to the inner ankle so your toes are still on the floor. Gives you a broader base of support. You still don't want to sit back into that right hip though. You're lengthened up through the top of your head. And you can put the foot if you want onto your inner calf. And then of course you can also bring the foot all the way up if you'd like your inner thigh and feel your foot gently pressing into the inner thigh, inner thigh coming back into your foot, and always using support. I and mean, if you don't want to let go, don't let go. Find something 
focus on, where you feel like you can really stay focused, but in a really easy way. Not like you're locking into the tree. More like you're growing into the tree. And that focus almost helps with that growing into the tree rather than trying to just block everything up. There'll be movement, right? There's a little bit of movement that happens. Not like the tree doesn't blow in the, wind, in the wind. Let's come on down, shake out just a little bit, move around. Let's turn our chairs around. If you're not using a chair, and yet you have your blocks there with you, bring them to the short end of your mat there. And let's just do a little bit more with strengthening for the legs and the hips. Coming into a little warrior three, bringing our feet right underneath our hips. And let yourself have your hands under your shoulders, maybe on the blocks, maybe on the chair seat. And then let your right foot float up in the air. And we're going to extend it back into a warrior three. Toes are pointed down. Now when you exhale, bend your left knee and bring your right knee in towards your face a little bit. And then when you inhale, stretch it back long. So again, exhale, bring your knee in towards your face, round a little bit. And then when you inhale, stretch it back. Now you can release your left arm forward if you want. That's up to you. You can keep the hand down. You can put it on the chair if you want, the back of the chair. We're going to bring that right foot down, bend both our knees for a second. And then start to extend the left leg back, coming into that straighter right knee. Find your warrior three. Hips are level and square. Toes are pointed downward. And then when you exhale, bend the right knee. Bring the left knee in towards your face. And then when you inhale, stretch it back again. So just again, exhaling. Really enjoy. Round into the back here, too. And then when you inhale, reach back again. Now let's do it one more time. And let yourself roll into that rounded back. And then when you extend that through the inner heel, if you want to release your right arm forward, do. Just coming into your warrior three. Coming into the backs of the legs, the hips. And then we'll release on down. And from here, we're going to come all the way down to the floor. So take your time. You might want to move your chair out of the way. And let yourself come on down onto your belly on the floor and then just release let your head relax down onto your hands propped and let yourself bend your knees i'm going to turn the other way maybe you can see better this way i don't really know which way is better we can talk about it later let your elbows uh knees bend and then let your knees come from side to side let your hips release just breathe And then come on back, let your legs stretch down long again, and let's come up onto our forearms, into a little sphinx pose, bringing your elbows underneath your shoulders, spread your fingers a little bit here, let yourself look down between your hands as you come into this sphinx pose. You know if it bothers your back, you can slide your elbows down more towards your waist and not go up so high, or you can slide the elbows further out. One more breath. And then bring your hands together. Interlace your fingers, clasp them, bend your knees. Lift up and just a little half forearm plank. Even if you haven't been doing any kind of planks or forearm planks, even if it's just a breath, stay in your half plank on that flesh above your knees there. Or you can put your toes down and lift up into a full forearm plank if you choose to. So you find what works for you. Really engaging the belly. One more breath if you can. And then come on down. And we're going to bring our right forearm parallel to the front edge of our mat and bend our left knee and flex our foot. Now, if for a half bow you can reach back and get hold of the top of your left foot, do. Pressing the foot gently into your hands. Not necessary to do that. You don't have to hold the foot. You can stay lower with your head down towards your forearm you can keep this left forearm folded in you can just pull the heel in just by muscle power and then we're going to switch and go to the other side flexing through the foot 
You can stay with your head down. You can rise your gaze more forward a little bit if you reach back and get that foot and you like half bow. Press the foot into your hand a little bit. And then we'll release and come on back down. Bringing the arms down alongside you now. Let yourself turn the palms down towards the floor. And on the next inhale, we're going to come into a locust pose. Reaching fingertips and toes back towards the wall behind us. You know that being in a high locust pose does not matter at all. You can be low. You're still strengthening the back. Reaching fingertips and toes back towards the wall behind you. Try not to lift your chin up and tense your neck. And then we'll come on back down. We're going to make our way towards child's pose from here. And obviously, pose of a child is not for everybody. Bringing the big toes together, knees apart. Some of us might need to stay forward. And some of us might be fine to shift our hips back and let, let ourselves come deeper into the hips there. That is just all up to you and your knees and your hips, you know that, and your back. So whether your arms are soft overhead or back alongside the legs with the palms turned up, or maybe you're forward more and just resting a little bit that way, take your time, let it feel good. Just, just enjoy breathing into your back opening up through the low back really it's the feeling of the, the low back broadening really with your breath almost like you're breathing in your pelvis and we'll bring our hands by our knees so we can come up just long enough to turn over, all right? We're going to come on around onto our backs on the floor from here. And once you get over, bring your feet onto the floor. Let your knees be bent. Let the knees just gently go a little bit from side to side, just so you shift from the top of one hip to the top of the other. And then bringing your right knee in towards your chest, we're going to extend our left leg down long, flexing through both feet. You can hold your shin, you can hold behind your thigh. Feel the right leg gently coming into your hands. And we're going to bring that left knee in and extend the right leg down long, flexing through both feet. Again. Press that leg gently into your hands. Let yourself find that alignment of the low back so you're not compressing your low back down into the floor. You have that natural curve. And then we'll bring both feet onto the floor. Bring your arms down alongside you. And set up for a little bridge pose here. Bend your elbows at first and just without lifting your hips. Let your palms face each other. Press into the backs of the arms and feel how your chest floats up. You can roll your shoulders under a little more from there. And you can decide if you want to lift your hips up. It can be an inch, right? You may decide you want to float your hips up higher. Some of you may want to get a block if you have them and rest on your block and support a bridge. You're welcome to let your arms release down long, of course, palms pressing down into the floor a little bit, or interlacing your fingers underneath you in your bridge pose here, or keeping elbows bent. So remember, you can move down and up from bridge. Feel the back of the head gently coming into the floor. Feel your quads engaging. Think about reaching the top buttock muscle down towards your heel. Heels. Not gripping, but lengthening. And you know, you can come down and up anytime you choose. So finishing off to come down, back down, all the way down now to the floor. Let's let our right knee come on back into our chest and extend our left leg long. 
and then hold behind your right thigh and send your right foot up in the air, if you can. Hold on. Okay, sorry. So, letting yourself extend that right leg up. You, can, you don't have to go totally straight. You know, you can walk up the leg towards your calf or your foot if you choose to extend through the back of the leg. Just let yourself release as best you can into your hamstring there, into the back of your leg. And then bring the knee, uh, the leg on back down so that you're holding either behind your thigh or on your shin. And then let your right hand draw the knee over to the right, over and up towards your right arm. Keep flexing through both your feet. And then we'll come back into center. Left hand comes across to that right knee. Stretch your right arm out beside you. Come over into a twist. Now, Maybe a couple inches is all you want to move over with that knee. Maybe you want to go farther. Let yourself take your time coming into the twist that feels good to you. Enjoy. You're welcome to turn your head to look to the right if that helps you. And then we'll come on back into center with the knee. We're going to bring the left knee in. And bring the right leg down, extend it long. Flex through both your feet. Hold behind the left thigh, extend the left foot up towards the ceiling. Now that doesn't mean you have to straighten your leg. You can if you want. You're still going to open up the back of the leg, whether you go straight or not. You can bring the leg in towards you as much as feels good to find that great feeling of opening up in the back of your leg really. Bring your breath to where you need it. And then we'll bend our knee. We're going to let our knee bend, come back in, and bring your left hand to your left knee to draw the knee to the left. Drawing that knee towards your left shoulder, kind of up towards your armpit a little bit. Opening up into the hip there. And then we'll come across. Let your right hand come to the left knee. Stretch your left arm out beside you. Now the knee can come just a little across the midline. You don't have to even get the hip off the floor to get up into your outer hip and into your glute. You can go further if you want to go further. If you want to turn to look to the left, just see about allowing that left shoulder to release down. center. Let's bring both knees in. Try a little happy baby. You know, you can send your feet up. You can just bring your hands around the outside of your legs if you want. Rest them on the back of your thighs. You can reach to your feet. Roll around a little bit if that feels good. Do what feels right for your hips and your back. So you're trying to just get relief here. You're not trying to come into any kind of extreme stretch. Widen if you can, and with longer legs, come into that wide angle here on your back. And you, know, you can move around with your feet, circling a little bit through your ankles. You can hold the outside of your legs and give them support if it feels like too much just to let them hang in space. You support. And then bring the feet on back up in the air. Knees come on back into the chest and just hug them in for a second. Some of you might even want to lift your head up and curl into a little ball. Don't do that if it hurts your neck. And then once you come back down, let your feet come onto the floor and listen to your body here for a second. We're going we're gonna to come into a little Shavasana. I'm, I'm going to get us into Shavasana and then rather than interrupt or say anything after a minute or so, I will just exit this video quietly and you can stay as long as you choose in Shavasana. 
But right now, if there is another movement or a pose, anything at all that you need to do, whether you need to do a plow pose or you need to come into another kind of a twist, maybe you need to let yourself find another release for your hips or your shoulders. I'm going to give you a minute or so here to do that. So just following your body, letting yourself move in any way that feels good. Obviously, if coming into Shavasana sounds like the best idea for you, you can go ahead and lie on your back. is to get really comfortable. So if you need to grab a blanket and put a blanket, I'm not here to help put bolsters on your knees. I'm not there with you to bring a blanket to put under your head. But as we do this more and more often, I think we'll all get more used to it. So, you know, be nice to yourself. Take Take these few minutes to allow yourself to get comfortable so that you can give your body and your mind time to benefit from all we just did. So just as you ease your way into now finding a way to be comfortably supported, close your eyes if you need to let your head Turn a little from side to side, do, so that you can find release there. You can move your arms, your legs to a place where your shoulders feel more comfortable. As you start to be with your own breath now, watching, accepting your breaths in and out. And you know the breath wants to change, you may find breath needs to be a little deep, then it gets a little shallow, then you need to take a deeper breath again. Just, just be okay with however the breath needs to come in and out. And when your mind wanders, see if you can softly bring your attention back to your breath. body starts to soften and your mind becomes a little quieter. A time when your body can benefit in whatever way it needs from all we just did. So give yourself these few minutes and allow yourself as long as you need to complete